Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Rosemary coming to you from Ansar Angels, and this is your weekly squirt of angel juice. This is a bit of an outtake from one of our Healing Wings of Light seminars. Just a little taste. We've got five more seats uh, available for our Kailua Kona. November 18th to 19th Healing Wings of Light seminar to teach you how to become an ordained Healing Wings of Light clairvoyant and healing practitioner. Today the angel Cambriel wants to come through. Cambriel utilizes amethyst on the rosary beads. And Cambriel is very independent, but at the same time, sort of, you know, caring. Now, this caring plus independence allows a flexibility. Now, this may cause those around. Uh, anybody watching this transmission, because if you're watching this transmission, you're, you're of a higher state than the ordinary person on the street, than the average Joe. What you want to uh, understand is that people are going to be avoiding you a little bit, not, not because they don't like you. Uh, quite the contrary is true. Quite the inverse is true. People are concerned that you're going to leave. They're concerned that you're going to abandon them. And so because of this concern, they are giving you as much as they can, as much of themselves as they can. But because they're afraid you're going to run away or, or, or leave, not due to any fault of your own, but because they have a, they're getting a vibe from you that you're going to abandon them. Be because of this, they're holding back. They're not sure what to do. And they also are feeling maybe a little bit that you're squirrely or you can't make up your mind or you're waffling between one thing and the other. Because most people on the, the lower planes of existence want you to make a choice between the good and the bad and the uh, heaven and hell. They want you to make a choice. Are you, uh, um, are you on this side of, of the equation? Are you on this side of the equation? Not understanding that this, an equation is a relationship. We've been asked by Cambriel to reiterate that this issue with idolatry and not making a graven image, even writing is a graven image. So if you're writing or reading writing, if you're reading something someone has written, you are consuming idolatry according to the literal understanding of these kinds of commandments. Now, if the Zohar is the liver then the Bible is the heart. These different books are, and we can debate about which organ which book is, because each sacred scripture is an organ. Perhaps the Holy Quran is the lungs, hence Isis. Perhaps. That would make sense. People's wrath and passion are enlivened through scriptures of Judeo-Christian scriptures and one's 
righteous indignation or anger is given life through the Zohar, or maybe the liver. So, and as you know, one takes, the other one changes, as one takes, the other one changes, because it takes different parts of your consciousness, just like uh, how the body works, how, how your body works. This is how the body of God works, is through relationships, through people, through how the relationship you have between different books, you know, be they worldly books or be they spiritual books, you can tell the difference. These books are, these holy and sacred books are not just books. They're mathematical constructs and they have an effect on your consciousness just like everything does. Now, trying to focus idolatry. Idolatry, according to Zohar, is simply believing that there are two, two, that there are two separate entities working, a force that's good and a force that's bad, and that they're fighting with one another and that they're in some ways equal. In reality, this is not the case. Adultery is not uh, found in artwork. It's not found in sculptures or painting that some are better at than others. It's not found, adultery is not found there. It's not found in the obscene weapons some people create with which to destroy said uh, envious artwork or envious uh, sculpture. No. Rather, idolatry, according to Zohar, is found in the belief or the reckoning or the idea, the simple idea, that there is any force but God, that there is any force but good, that there is any force you know, believing that then in actuality there are two opposing forces that are actually oppose each other. Not understanding that everything is one. Not understanding that God's permutation is one. This belief is true idolatry. And this is the belief. This is the reckoning, the stance, the position that will be destroyed. One must find commonality. And how does one find commonality? One understands how... We all understand how other people feel. We don't understand other people's actions, but we understand how they feel. And we understand that everybody's living according to their own culture. And you know, just the way they were brought up, their own culture their own surroundings, what they've been exposed to, how, how they've been trained to behave. Now, people who have uh, step-parents are going to, you know, stepfather, stepmother, whatever, or plural, stepfather, stepmothers, they're going to behave differently and have a lot more abandonment issues and be more quote-unquote squirrely um, or quote-unquote out of control than people who had uh, you know, it's the proper mother-father situation, stay together through good and bad, through sickness and health and all of that. They're going to have less abandonment issues. They're going to be more solid. They're going to be more, uh, they're, they're going to be less flexible and more kind of drilled in to their own way of being and thinking and behaving. So, and, and someone who's been uh, an orphan, you know, they're, they're going to behave very differently, you know, also. So one must understand that everybody's, that in the same situation, you would do the exact same thing. People say, oh, no, I wouldn't. And of course, unless you're in that situation, you have no idea what you would do. All of us are, are like that. So this is where forgiveness comes from. But that doesn't mean that we just allow bad behavior. It has to be cleaned up. People have to be trained to be functional members of society, just like your body gets rid of things that don't function well or are difficult to the body, the body just naturally gets rid of it if you allow it. The body will naturally get rid of anything bad if you allow it. You listen to the body and you, you just pay attention to your body and focus on your body, make your body healthy, make it comfortable. It doesn't mean what feels good. 
Don't do what feels good. Don't do what feels bad. Do what makes you feel well. We've said this before. We will continue to say it. There is good pain and good pleasure. There is bad pain and bad pleasure. There is healthy pain and healthy pleasure. There is unhealthy pain and unhealthy pleasure. There is always going too far in one direction. Bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the walls of the temple, bouncing off the walls of the, the inner temple. Not going the middle pillar way, not going to the center, straight up the center with balance and, and reason. Sublimating your baser desires into higher forms of expression and, and sharing. Now, the purpose of life on earth is to bring you to a state where you are having the sensation of being happy. If you're not happy, change your physical situation. Trying to get other people to do things is not going to change your situation or make you happy. Changing the way you feel by changing uh, your your status, with the body is feeling good, then that's where you're supposed to be, that's where God wants you. Because this is the, the states that we're in are eternal. If you're feeling happy in the moment, you're eternally happy. If you're feeling distressed in the moment, you're eternally distressed. So in every moment, remain calm. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. We, you the human part of us tends to think that if we get all excited and upset about a situation, that that's going to somehow, or if we fret, continually fret about a situation, that that's going to somehow help us and make the situation appropriate. It will do just the opposite. It will make your body sick. And although you may think you're getting uh, something because you're working so hard for it, in reality, your equation is off. You're, you're, you're putting in a lot of effort and getting very little out of it. What's a better way to approach it is to, you know, again, make yourself comfortable project the energy you want to project, project a higher state, raise your energy, and people will show up when your energy is raised to a certain level, and when they show up, simply build them. In the words of one of my wise teachers, Stuart Weil, who is uh, no longer on the, on the earth plane, but very much alive in the realm of heaven. And he's a very good teacher and a, a wonderful person and he wants to bestow his blessings upon everyone because he's still here in the heavenly realms and he's now bigger better, more substantial. He was of the realm of un unsubstantial on the earth. Now he's in the realm of the uh, divine substantial. Now he's saying substantial. Ah, we have it upside down. We have it backwards. When we, when we pass on, if we go to uh, the heavenly realms, we become substantial.
if we, uh, he doesn't want me to be concerned about going to any other realm because he's reminding me that that physical life is hell. Hell on earth is earth is hell. Obviously, all the other realms are varying forms and varying levels of heaven. So reincarnation is a form of returning to hell. But some people want to, you know, come back because you know if you enjoy your physical life, it's okay. And people can do whatever they want. There's seven levels on the earth plane, and there's seven levels in the spiritual planes. When you pass, when you when you don't reincarnate and you stay on the heavenly in the heavenly realms, then you uh, can. And you know, I suppose you say you can choose to go back any time, but why would you? Okay, uh, that's a transmission from Cambriel, who is one of the uh, purple rays of the heavenly realms. Kind of a wintry angel, January type angel, and and Stuart Wilde is very comfortable in this particular realm of heaven at this time. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This is your weekly Squirt of Angel Juice. This is a Healing Wings of Light outtake transmission. Thank you for joining us. And join us again next week. Peace. Hello everyone, this is Rosemary coming to you from Ansar Angels. If you would like to get your free mini angel answer this month by phone, just call the number up here on the screen or you can go to our website at readingsbyrosemary.com and you can get emails as well, details and emails. In the meantime, cheers. See?